ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀನಿ ನಾಳೆ ಪಾಟೀಲ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಆ ತರ ಹಲೋ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡೇ ಟು ಸೆಷನ್ ಟು ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಎಫ್ ಡಿ ಪಿ ಟೈಟಲ್ಡ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಐ ಮಿಷಿನ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೋಬೋಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಂಜುನಾಥ್ ಸರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ವೈರೀಸ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಡ್ at the end of the session uh, exclusively tomorrow so that is day 3 session at the end and uh, if there are any queries also you can uh, post in the chat section uh, we will look into that and uh, at the end of the day 3 session at the end uh, sir will going to clear all the queries okay thank you sir you can uh, proceed sir yeah thank you thank you very much okay sir. Uh, good morning to one and all for the se- good morning to one and all for the second day of the fdp uh, on advanced advances in artificial intelligence machine learning and uh, robotics it's this is the day 2 uh, now in the yesterday's webinar i had briefly summed up what is automation the types the evolution the examples of automation what is robotics what is a robot what are the types what are the laws of robotics followed by automation and robots then the anatomical parts of the system then the robot classification the specs uh, and the programming of the systems then what is ai uh, what are its uh, 15 goals what are is machine learning and what are the main applications of machine learning industry 4.0 and various applications of the robots i discussed with respect to the industrial aspect the science engineering and technological then the defense related medical then the space and with respect to the teaching uh, today's seminar uh, today's uh, webinar will be summed up relating to the ai and its goal the ai ml based robots with respect to the nano systems that is the nano robotics then i'll deal something with respect to the modeling of nano robots as lot of research is going on in this uh, modeling of nano robots then some applications of the micro and the nano robots and some sensors and actuators which are used in the design of the nano systems and the micro systems mechatronics some industrial applications of nano robots the thinking machines the microbots the nanobots and the picobots micro 10 to the power of minus 6 nano 10 to the power of minus 9 pico 10 to the power of minus 12 the nano hive tools uh, like uh, the cadence tools which are used for simulation of the systems then modeling of nano robots and some applications of the nano robots finally i would like to conclude with a brief uh, biomedical engineering applications with respect to cancer therapy drug drug delivery etc still now since for the past two, two in the yesterday's webinar for two hours nearly two hours i had a very brief interaction with the macro robotics that is the huge robotics robotics robots which are very huge in size how we design them how we model them and uh, how we uh, what are its applications etc now we will shift our attention from the macro robotics to the micro robotics and then slowly we will move to the nano robotics at the end of the session finally to the pico robotics in the tomorrow session right now let us start uh from how the nanotechnology era commenced and how it led to the development of the nano robots from the macro from the macro from the macro robotics now let us let me tell you what is this nanotechnology see we all know that we the atoms are the basic building blocks for all types of matter in, in our universe you take any particular particle it is made up of atoms and molecules even our human being the human body is full made up of cells millions of living cells that is what is called as a nanoparticles the cells are therefore called as nature's micro or the nano micro machines see if you see in the earlier days in the 18th century in the 20th 19th 20th century the systems used to be developed from the scratch from the starting that is from the micro nano and then they used to go to the macro 
as uh, science and technology started improving in the 19th century due to the industrial revolution and the invention of numerous machines uh, which led to the um, uh, development of science and technology in the present 20th 21st century the, as the technology started improving the macro re re uh, started reducing to the nano uh, nano that is the miniaturization came into the picture if you see the olden days computers the olden days machines the olden days electronic components they were very big very huge in size okay for example if you see the ma mainframe computers in the olden days which were very huge now as the technology developed the miniaturization started taking place so the result is the development of the technology at the nano level which is called as the nanotechnology what is this nanotechnology See, it is the technique of building devices up to the atomic level or the molecular level. That is what is called as nanotechnology. What is our main aim? The main aim of this nanotechnology is to advance the engineering sciences at atomic and micro molecular level in order to make particles and devices with novel and enhanced properties. That novel and enhanced properties are electrical, electronic, mechanical, and the physical properties. See, if you take a macro system, whatever party or whatever properties it is having, the same thing. If it is uh, the size of the system is reduced, and if the same properties are being uh, incorporated, then everybody will go for the micro or the nano system. Right now, what is this? So, different countries define nanotechnology in different ways. So, various countries' uh, definitions I'm uh, letting you know here. So, one country defines nanotechnology as a branch of engineering science which deals with the particles 1 to 100 nanometer in size and it involves developing materials or devices within that size. So, we are at the end, I'm going to tell you how we are designing a nanobot and a microbot within that 1 to 100 nanometers and using sophisticated simulation tools called the nano i software and it can also be defined as a rapidly advancing and multidisciplinary field involving different subjects physics chemistry um, uh, mathematics biology engineering such as electrical electronic mechanical the computer science and information science or the engineering of the functional systems at the atomic scale or the molecular scale is also called as a nanotechnology or study of manipulating matter at the miniaturization level at the atomic level as i already told you in the uh, previously that if you take the olden day computers olden day mobiles machines electronic components they were very big very huge in size so as technology developed due to the breakout of the industrial revolution uh, what happened see the size of the components started reducing big becomes becoming smaller and smaller as a result of which if you compare the olden day systems with the modern day systems with the advance in technology more efficiency is there more reliability is there uh, all those things uh, has been possible with the development of the science engineering and technology now what is this nanotechnology there are two words nano and technology so nano in fact is a greek word it means that small 10 to the power of minus 9 one nanometer is 10 to the power of 9 or 1 by 1 after and what is this technology it means it is a method of dealing with the art or science of applying scientific knowledge to a practical problem in this practical problem today we are going to tell you about the nano robot design and uh, the micro robots how it can be used in the current field for example uh, nowadays since the three four months uh, this uh, technology is being used to um, uh, find out vaccines for the corona and one nanometer can be defined as 10 to the power of minus nine meter one billionth of a meter so here i have shown you some of the dimensions different dimensions of the various nanoparticles for example if you take a dna molecule it's a two nanometer an atom is a 1.1 nanometer and a virus the rbc's and the human uh, air which is 10 to 15 micrometers right now nano plus technology is nanotechnology it is slightly different from nano sciences so the physics people the basic sciences people call it as a nano sciences whereas the engineering people call it as a nanotechnology technology so what is this technology as i already told you it is a method of dealing with the art or science of applying scientific knowledge to a practical problem to solve a practical problem or to uh, for, for example to design a miniaturized product or for a medical application problem or to devise a pill or to design a pill, pill etc like that and the science means it is a knowledge 
or a system of knowledge concerned with the physical world and its phenomenon. Various uh, um, uh, concepts come into the picture. That is the cognitive sciences, the physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology. In fact, nanosciences is fully related to physics and uh, uh, chemistry. So it's a device, uh, device physics, uh, devices of the physics, uh, th this one. Okay. Here I've shown you some of the uh, stages from the macro level to the micro level and then to the nano level. Earlier says, if you say the, it was, uh, the size was very big and as a technology developed, the bacteria, the human, see this micro and then finally to the nano size. And this third also gives you a pictorial representation of the various uh, uh, parts of a, so for example, a human ear, which I already told, which is 10 to 50 micrometer, a DNA and uh, the microelectronic mechanical system, the head of a pin, the head of a pin that is the safety pin, which is one to two nanometer and uh, carbon nanotubes. As I already told you in yesterday, the silicon and germanium is day by day vanishing and the new semiconducting material called as a carbon nanotube is uh, gaining more and more uh, important, importance. So this is the scale from the millimeter scale for the micro scale and then comes to the nano nano scale. So this is possible uh, for, by reducing the size of the particle up to the nanometer level, up to the picometer level because of the development in the VLSI concepts and the embedded systems and the scale of things, the nanometer and uh, more. So again, you can see that I have compared two things. One is the natural uh, nano particles and the man-made nano particles. The natural uh, nano, natural part, natural uh, nanoparticles of the human ear, the RBCs, WBCs, the uh, platelets, the ants, etc. And uh, the thing, the man-made particles, which I already shown you, is the head of a pin. And uh, so these are the this one. Okay. Now, who doesn't know Moore's law? In this, when you come to nanotechnology, the first basics would be the Moore's law. All the electronic people will be knowing about this Moore's law. Uh, see, this Moore's law describes a long-term trend in the history of the computing hardware. It started in the 1900s, now actually. Moore is a Gordon Moore, who's a, uh, who's a uh, scientist uh, who devised this particular law. It says that the number of transistors can be placed, that can be placed on an integrated chip, doubles approximately every two years. So what happens is the transistors uh, um, uh, density doubles, the electronic and electrical components started shrinking in size as a result of which the technology developed. So the result is the development of a macro device or the nano device, what is called as a micro technology or the nanotechnology. So in the old, earlier days, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, up to the 20s, 2020s, you can see how the processing technology started uh, developing like anything. In the recent 2020, the Intel uh, um, uh, 7 processor, which is being released, which is being um, uh, come in the market, on the tip of a pin, so they have embedded some billions of transistors. That is the computing pro computing power. So the Moore's law it relates to this. And another one slide. So this Moore's law also forms a basic for evolution of micro and nano machining process. So micro machining process or the nano machining process is nothing but the process in which you are reducing a particle from the macro size to the micro or the nano, nano size. So this uh, concept has led us to the evolution of the new technology called as nanotechnology. And this nanotechnology as time progresses in the webinar, I'll be concentrating on the development of the nanobots which can be used for the medical applica 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 applications. You can see here in the earlier days, there was a vacuum diode which was a very big then came the diode then came the transistor the, 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 those are all the discrete components and then modern day components you can see everything the silicon resistor uh, resistor inductors capacitors everything is being etched onto a single single chip so the number of transistors and resistors on a chip doubles every 24 hours 24 months that is the uh, from, uh, what Gordon Moore has uh, said Okay. Now, as the evolution uh, started, just like how the robotic revolution started, then the computer uh, generated evolution started. Similarly, this nanotechnology also evolved in stages. So first, uh, in the early 1900s, 
it was the vacuum tube technology the huge black and white television radar radios were there into the picture then in the 1950s william shockley invented the transistor in the at&t bell labs as a result of which the semiconductor technology started gaining importance so then the transistor radio came the computers came the cell phone came etc in the early uh, 2000 uh, early part of the 21st century so this micro technology um, uh, revolved into the new technology called as a nanotechnology because of the invention of the various integrated chips and the VLSI concept, very large scale integration took, uh, took place, etc. As a result of which uh, the developments of the nanobots and the molecular electronics, the wearable devices, then internet applications started in the picture after the uh, advent of the Windows 95. Now, once uh, this uh, still the scientists are not happy with this nanotechnology, still they want to reduce the particle size to still announce and beyond that is up to the 10 to the power of minus 12 that is what is called the pico technology under the femto level femto technology which is still at an infant stage and still the research lot of research is going on uh, in the pico technology still we is now currently we are in the third stage that is the nanotechnology level right once this is success then uh, we can uh, then the scientists and all will start will, as uh, start time progress still with the invention of the uh, various electronic components reducing in size it can be this technology is possible uh, preferably by the end of 2050 you can see that uh, it will be a invisible just a dot a particle will be in the form of a speck of a dirt speck of a dirt so this also shows how the evolution began starting from the 1900s to the uh, 2015 you can see various uh, uh, what you call particles starting from the macro to the nano level starting from the 3d to the 2d etc and again another evolution of nano machining in the from the 2500 bc how the nanoparticles were there then how in the 2015 uh, the particles uh, size of the particles started reducing smaller and smaller in the 1990s one new uh, the technique a new uh, concept was introduced what is the use of the carbon nanotubes so now carbon nanotubes has got a very lot of applications and nowadays they are using in almost each and uh, every field of uh, app applica application so just how uh, the uh, nanotechnology evolutions to, took place so this generation is also i'm going to explain so this na generation of nanotechnology started from the early 2000s to 2000 the first generation second generation third generation the fourth generation and the fifth generation of the nanotechnology so the first generation is called the frame one and from second to third fourth it's called the risk governance of the frame two the final one is called as the fin final uh, risk governance uh, uh, <coughs> now the first generation uh, were called as the passive nanostructures that is the aerosols colloids coatings nanoparticles reinforced composite polymers ceramics etc in the second uh, generation it was called as active nanostructure active nanos you might have studied in the network analysis that the active sources and the passive sources similarly the active nano so active nano sources that means they can generate the uh, power by itself that's called as a bioactive health effects the 3d transistors amplifiers actuators etc in the third generation of the nano systems it was guided assembly 3d networking and hierarchical architecture robotics and evolutionary nano systems comes into the picture the fourth generation was to the molecular level then finally to the atomic level right so the molecular design by design atomic design then emerging functions etc now we are in the era of this fourth generation of uh, nano systems that is from 2015 to 2020 now as a as time progresses still now we can see i think many of you might have been using the vlsi <coughs> cad in software and you know how to design a particular up to the sub micron level there's a particular limit right now uh, it is proved that one day or the other uh, the moore's law will definitely break that means it will it will be null and void it means that for example you take a small piece of paper right you go on cutting that piece of paper into smaller 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 in sizes how long you will cut 
in uh, cut the particle into a uh, normal uh, so a smaller size there is a particular limit similar to what is called as hooke's law so you go on stretching a rubber band you go on stretching till one point it reaches beyond which the hooke's law the it when it reaches the yield point it breaks similarly so a particle can be cut down to a nano level or up to the maximum up to the pico level beyond which it cannot be cut otherwise the particle uh, properties etc will be lost so there is that is what is called as exponential curve eventually reaches a point that is called as a saturation point you might have studied in the magnetics the bh curve or the stresses similarly every nano system reaches an eventually a point where the growth rate almost becomes infinite stop you cannot cut down a particle uh, to a uh, to, to that particular so that is what is called the singularity nano system and at that point moore's law will become null and void and it will become obsolete right and the structure structure of this nanotechnology i has already told you that it is a technology it's a <coughs> it is governed by the interdisciplinary nature various branches comes into the picture already in the second or third slide i already told you the various concepts one is the physics chemistry biology and um, computer science electrical and electronics engineering mechanical engineering and the cognitive sciences so physics physics any uh, particle movement relates to the dynamics kinetics or the kinematics so the construction of specific molecules is governed by the physical forces if you want to move a nanoparticle from rest you need a force or an actuator okay because they are all made up of atoms right chemistry because it is uh, nano science the interaction of different molecules is governed by chemical for uh, chemical forces basically physics chemistry biology forms the basic three basic subjects in this nanotechnology of in the manufacturing of any device right biology and better understanding of how the biological systems work at the lowest level or uh, it, uh, and it may allow future scientists to use simple Similar process to accomplish new process. Computer science. Normally, we have to you know, all the modern day computers, all the modern day uh, uh, gadgets, systems are interfaced to the computers. You need computers to control the nano devices. Why? In order to exchange the information through networking, a uh, collection of large amount of information for the large amount of uh, sensors. Right? See, the one thing you can do, like uh, we, we can come to a conclusion that a number of nano systems will relate. to a will form a macro system that is the this one right electrical and electronic engineering this branch also finds a lot of applications to operate independently nano device you need a steady supply of power you need actuators you need motors to move it from rest so you need electrical and electronic circuitry is needed to transmit the power or to transmit it wirelessly to the system or to a particular place mechanical engineering even at the nano level issues such as load bearing the gears are there you have to transmit the power where is the wear and tear because mechanical particles will be subjected to wear and tear for example the gears the silicon gears etc the material fatigue and reliability will be there lubrication also still apply cognitive cognitive sciences fully relates to the mental process of understanding like humans how we human beings work similarly how the nano systems will work so that uh, depends on the cognitive science cognitive sciences and some of the um, brief nanotechnology applications i would like to mention in this context uh, before i start up the design of the nano systems right uh, information technology uh, then the energy then consumer goods uh, then the medicine etc now in this uh, webinar i am going to concentrate on the cancer treatment bone treatment drug delivery appetite control then the drug uh, medical tools diagnostic tools and the uh, such as drug delivery pellets the tissue engineering cultures and this is leading to what is called as the micro or the nano robotic entities which makes use of the nano technology and the micro technology concepts so this nano technology can be used in uh, medicines can be used in information technology can be used in energy also the solar cells they are nothing but uh, uh, nano particles in the fuel cells the batteries the biofuels etc it can be used in uh, foods and the beverages then the household and cosmetics the powder what we are using and uh, the pill the medicine pill or what you take uh, what you take it inside your body um, uh, for the uh, one particular course 
uh, that is nothing but made up of small 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 powders so that is a nanoparticle na nanoparticles right each particles behavior will be there so the behavioral theory comes into the uh, picture so nanotechnology for the consumer products one is in automotive one is in construction electronics electrical LA engineering the food and the drinks and all the the food when you chew that it will be your food will be um, broken down into a number of smaller small particles okay it might stuck in the teeth or it might go to the digestive system etc medicine then in the textiles then the chemicals then the paints in the cosmetics the energy environmental household sports then the warfare etc so this nanotechnology finds a brief application in each and every field in the modern day world so we are concentrating mainly on the electronic and the medical applications with the help of some uh, nano 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 robots okay for consumer products i am broadly dividing into four parts one at the medicine level one at the food and the cosmetics level then the environment and the human health from the health concept point of view and the industrial and the technological concept point of view if you come to the medicine detection of cancer using nanomaterials for imaging and biomedical biomarking detection and it can act as a drug delivery pellets for if you for example if any part in the body is being affected what you do you go to a doctor and you take a antibiotic course for five days or one week etc and after some after some time uh, you are um, uh, what do you call the uh, affected part will be healed and you will feel better instead of that we can use this nano materials or the nanobot to be inserted into the body to go up to that part so uh, spray the drug and come out immediate relief so prevention and control using research with the nanotechnology nano biosensors and uh, management and control of diseases in fact this medicinal application lot of research is going on in the detection of the corona virus using this nanotechnology uh, using this uh, nanotechnology which i would like to um, stress in the tomorrow's webinar in the tomorrow's webinar coming to the food and uh, cosmetics the food packaging industry then the nano size powders then the additives additives that is being used in the ice creams uh, and uh, the nutrients for the nano capsules etc from the health concept point of view water purification the nano materials added to the water wells uh, then uh, nano capsule for pesticides delivery nano technology applied to textiles for improving the protection then the nano tubes used for increasing the efficiency of the solar panels to uh, yeah, uh, take more to pull more amount of sunlight then the technology if you come to the technological and the industrial aspect point of view a new uh, type of technology computing aspect is coming to the picture after the cloud computing what is called the quantum dots computing or the quantum computing so quantum computing is used in led panels for the screens and you can add it to the additives to the paints for increasing the efficiency and the life of the paint then the improved uh, chemical properties of the construction materials to make it more stronger and uh, autom automotive materials so basically four main applications i have considered here now in this i will concentrate mainly on our electrical and electro electrical engineering and uh, uh, applications point of view if you have seen the olden days uh, robots the which are very huge in size the macro you might have seen the servo motors and the stepper motors and the dc motors and then the induction motors etc which are very huge in size there will be a stator there will be a rotor and uh, conversion from uh, yeah, 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 conversion from electrical energy to the mechanical mechanical energy etc etc see normally why motors are used they are nothing but actuators or transducers conversion conversion of energy from one form into the another form so from electrical form into the mechanical form so you want to move a system from rest a bus or a robot from rest then you have to use an actuator or a motor right so now as science and technology started increasing what are uh, developing at a rapid phase in the last uh, 50 50 years uh, what happened the the size of the motors also started reducing becoming smaller and smaller and smaller so that has led to the development of the micro motors the micro gears the nano electrical machines the nano gears and the nano wires recently this uh, at and bell labs along with uh, some uh, uh, jobs uh, some, some companies in japan and uh, they developed a very very small minute uh, nano motor 
uh, that mano, nano motor is so small that you cannot see with your naked eye and it rotates at 3000 uh, rpm in fact the intel uh, 10 processor i10 processor which is going to be released uh, uh, in the market uh, and there on the top of the central processing unit a layer of micro motors uh, this uh, nano motors has been placed for cooling the processor so what happened is that uh, power generation to be reduced uh, heating effect uh, a array of uh, this mic uh, this nano motors has been etched on uh, etched onto that uh, uh, central processing unit uh, for reducing the power handling capacities okay so as that's what i want to tell in this particular tell in this particular this one so as science and technology started developing with the uh, you know, development of electronics uh, electronic vlsi technology etc the motors also started reducing smaller becoming smaller and smaller so first came the micro motors then came the nano motors that also has led to a micro gears you might have heard of the small gears the, which are used in the motors normally the gears are used to reduce the speed and increase the torque okay that n1 by n2 is equal to t1 by t2 so these micro nano motors finds a lot of application in almost all the nano devices nano robots in the micro robots okay now this carbon nanotubes is was one such uh, um, uh, material which is finding a lot of application with respect to the electrical electronic and chemical and mechanical properties so silicon germanium is becoming obsolete in the nowadays so with this that has also led to the uh, design and development of the carbon nanotube nano wise see normally from the armature for the rotor etc to the particular uh, um, device you are taking copper wires right the uh, problem with copper wires is the losses will be there i squared r losses copper losses will be there so if you use uh, if you um, generate 100 percent power by the time it goes to the receiving it it will become 80 percent power the remaining 20 percent has been wasted in the form of i squared r losses or the copper losses so that the efficiency will be reduced so the scientists have proved that the use of nano wires instead of copper wires can increase the efficiency up to 95 to 98 nearly 100 percent uh, this one so this uh, nano wires is becoming more and more uh, efficient in the modern days and these wires are being used uh, for the uh, general for the transmission of the signals uh, for the current from the uh, one particular point to the another particular point in the circuitry and these components are used for powering the micro robots or the nano robots so what are actuators actuators and motors are nothing but the devices which are used to actuate a particular joint or a link for particular uh, motion a bus is there a vehicle is there car is there what are the actuators the fuel so the motor etc so actuators are the devices that are used for movement so here we are concentrating on the nano and the micro uh, motors which are very very small See, an article appeared in uh, National Geographic uh, magazine a couple of uh, months back. That was in two, uh, 2010, a group of uh, NASA and uh, University of California at Berkeley engineers, they developed the world's first micro scale motor. And in fact, uh, that was also patented and the scientists and also they got a Nobel Prize for physics. Again in 2015, again the UC Berkeley physicist created the first nanoscale motor that is a gold rotor on a nanotube shaft that could ride on the back of a virus which is very very small a virus is nothing but a nanoparticle which is very very small a coronavirus right it is around 3000 rpm it rotates right in the current 2020 exactly after 20 years of the rapid development of nanotechnology from the 2000s the CATNT bell labs developed the world's smallest synthetic motor that has been every that has been uh, made so entirely using nanoparticles using the see the armature the wires everything is chipped real side technology you cannot see with your naked eye that small very very small uh, it is very very small in nature right the electrostatic nano motors they also got red rotors and status that represents a significant step forward in the nanotechnology and proves that nanotubes and other nanostructures several hundred times smaller than that of a human ear and that can be manipulated and assembled into true devices 
right so that is the level of uh, sub micron technology which is going on in the nano fabrication process but one of the major drawback one of the major disadvantage is uh, designing and fabricating a particular particle at the nano level is very very di uh, difficult because in our country we do not have that much uh, sophisticated fab labs and there are only three around i think uh, around four fab labs in the country one is in bharat electronics in bangalore another is in iit bombay another is in semiconductor complex of India in uh, um, Haryana where all the um, um, IC chips are being manufactured then another one is in uh, Sir CV Raman Nagar Bhagmane Tech Park that is uh, Texas Instruments so these these are the places where we can go up to the sub micron uh, uh, micron level how do you fabricate a particular uh, nano robot or a nano, nano, nano device right and there are various methods various techniques are there so okay that techniques there are two called that those two techniques are called as a top-down approaches and the bottom-down approaches and these are the approaches which are used in the nano scale process in the fabrication uh, techniques in the top-down process you go for what is called the lithography lithography is one of the uh, famous processes which are used for in the uh, during the etching techniques uh, for manufacturing a particular device or a product at the nano level optical and x-ray lithography is there electron beam ion beam lithography scanning probe lithography atomic fork microscope atomic force microscope is one device which you, where you can see a particular up to the sub micron level up to the 10 to the power of 12, minus 12 minus millions of uh, levels you can uh, uh, see with you uh, with that particular microscope like how you used to see in your high school level a particular plant cell in a uh, Biological microscope and material removal, deposition, chemical, uh, mechanical, or ultrasonics. All these are related to VLSI, uh, VLSI techniques. Then printing and uh, imprinting, etc. So the bottom-up approaches are layer by layer self-assembly. First layer, second layer. For example, the P layer, the N layer. Again, the P layer, etc. Suppose if it is a semiconductor device, uh, how do you design it layer by layer? Then the molecular self-assembly direct assembly, coating, then colloidal aggression. So these are the standard processes which are used in the fabrication of a nano devices and uh, released into the market for a particular uh, process. Okay, so these are the technologies or the concepts which are used to observe a particular particle at the nano level. So that if you observe at the nano level, uh, nano level you can see the behavioral. So one important uh, branch of engineering comes into the picture called as a behavioral theory in fact two students uh, two students in iit karakpur they have devised a behavioral theory concept for a particular nanoparticle and in fact uh, the, they have got uh, very good prizes and all so that uh, in fact that was also patented uh, behavioral theory like uh, game theory and used in artificial intelligence so what are those technologies one is a scanning electron microscope transmission electronic microscope scanning probe micro microscope then the scanning tunneling microscope atomic force microscopes and these are the devices which will allow the scientists and the researchers to observe events at the atomic level so we are everything doing at the micron and the nano level see if anything is there at the macro level you can see for example if you take a resistor inductor or a capacitor or a transistor at the discrete component you can hold it in your hand and you can do some uh, experiments or you can do some uh, what you call analysis results used in circuitry to get some uh, res experimental results but this nano particles behavior is very very difficult you cannot predict how it behaves because at that particular level the level the voltage level will be very very low you have to take it up to the ttl logic level a lot of amplification is needed so in order to see how they behave you can make use of this uh, devices one best device is the what is called as the atomic force microscope which is used to allow the nano engineers to observe the events at the uh, atomic level uh, observe the uh, events at the nano atomic level that is the movement how a particular particle is moving in a fluid or uh, in a medical uh, device or in what you call in a pill etc like that so nanoscopic devices and integrated nano systems a nano chip this nano chip forms the basis for the uh, nano robots or the what you call it a micro robot so currently available microprocess use the resolutions as uh, up to up to 32 nanometers right and this uh, chip uh, 
houses up to a billion transistors on a single chip. That is a MEMS, microelectronic mechanical system based nano chips. They have got future capability up to two nanometers cell leading up to one terabyte uh, memory per chip. See, as a result of which what happened, more number of transistors goes on etching onto a single chip, uh, then the memory capacity goes on increasing. That is one of the advantage of this uh, nanotechnology. And device miniaturization takes place into the picture. And this nano chip is being used in uh, currently in uh, nanobots for uh, doing a one, one any particular application. Nano scale again the second part called the NEMS sensor, nano electronic mechanical system sensor. A NEMS bacteria sensor is used to identify the different types of pathogens, alkalis, and the viruses, and to uh, take a precaution, precaution, precautionary measure, or to kill that bacteria and to bring it out of the human body. So this NEMS technology, nano electronics, MEMS has gone. In fact, MEMS uh, is one of the very beautiful subject uh, which is there as an elective in our uh, electronic electronic stream in the VTO in many curriculums also. So MEMS is gone, now comes as a NEMS, the nano electronic mechanical system because you are taking a particle up to the 10 to the power of minus 9 level. So this NEMS technology enables creation of ultra small and highly sensitive sensors for various applications. See there are thousands of millions of sensors, example you can take a thermistor or you can say a thermometer or you can say a tachometer or you can say various types of sensors are there, LVDT is there. Uh, then um, ultrasonic sensors are they the same thing they're discrete it has to be made using carbon or made using silicon and germanium so that is the sensor at the nano level so the nano electronic mechanical system four sensor that which i've shown in that figure is the applicable to the pathogenic bacteria detection so that nem sensor is uh, detecting the bacteria again which is at the nano level that also we cannot be seen using nano high which you can have to see use your uh, uh, atomic force microscopes, right? Nanophotonic systems is there. Those NIST nano photonic systems work with light signals, that is electrical signals in electronic systems, and they enable parallel processing. That means higher computing capability in a smaller chip. As I already told you, a millions of nanoparticles together will form a macro particle. Right. So each and every nanoparticle will contribute its applications to the macrostructure. So that enables the realization of optical systems on a semiconductor chip. Another one biggest uh, uh, the development is the use of the nanotechnologies in the fuel cells. So normally these fuel cells use hydrogen and air as fuels to produce water as a byproduct. And this technology uses a nano material membrane to produce electric electricity. Right. If, if you see the Tesla car which has been uh, released in the market last year, that entire Tesla car around uh, yeah, 700 to 800 kilometers it, it uh, gives, uh, that is entirely built up with lithium ion cells and this uh, fuel cells, which is made up of nano this one. Again, I'm extending that, uh, I already told you, electric cars, Tesla. The fuel cells use hydrogen and air as fuels and produce water as a byproduct. So this technology uses a nanomaterial membrane to produce electricity. Once the electricity is produced, that is used to run a motor and that motor is used for electric displacement. That is conversion from electrical energy to the mechanical energy, that is the rotation and the car will move, for, move forward. So that electric cars, the Tesla, you can see the backside, the belief, the way the people, where the um, people sit, uh, passengers sit, the entire layer is being filled up with uh, array of uh, fuel cells, the lithium ion cells. As a result of which, uh, what happens, 700 to 800 kilometers, of course, it carves a crore. If, uh, crore, uh, a fuel cell is device that converts chemical potential energy, etc., and hydrogen. And then once that uh, uh, electrical energy is stored here in the stored here, then it can be used for any type of applications. And a structure of the fuel cells I have shown here: hydrogen, oxygen, water out, etc. And the schematic of a fuel cell is also show, uh, sh shown in this uh, context. Okay, yeah. now. As so now, as the technology, nanotechnology has started increasing day by day, even the medic, it has entered into the medical applications also. So that is what is called as a lab on a chip or a system on chip, SOC, they call it as. 
that is a lab on a chip integrates one or more laboratory operations on a single chip and it provides faster results and easy operations what are the main applications the main applications is in the bio biochemical analysis that is in the dna protein cell identification analysis or the bio defense etc etc see for example if you uh, if you are not feeling well or you have an affected with fever or something or typhoid something what do you do you go to a hospital and you go for a pathogenic analysis or you go for a checkup or a scanning once you the, what they do scanning for example you want to check up the cholesterol or uh, the sugar level or the bp level and you are, they will be taking around uh, some uh, some, of, some part of the blood uh, before food and after food and the pathologist they will uh, do lot of analysis experiments and they will find out uh, what is your sugar level what is the wbc count what is the rbc count etc all this uh, all this this one now with the development of technology uh, this nanotechnology there is no need to go to the uh, doctors itself just to take a small uh, drop of uh, blood and put it on that uh, particular nano chip that is what is called as a lab on a chip or a system on a chip uh, and uh, once you put that uh, drop of the blood uh, so the various devices will be there that will interact with that blood and analysis is being made and uh, it will give out the result at uh, no time no time because it is used for well, that is what is called the chip gene analysis device in fact in uh, many of the advanced countries uh, this type of analysis is being used to for uh, for the to identify wbc count the rbc count in the human uh, human blood and uh, this nanoscale devices in the integrated nano system one of the main uh, important point where it can be used it can act as a drug delivery pellets so the impact of nanotechnology and drug delivery pellets is a targeted drug delivery that's what i have told uh, for example you have gone to a doctor he gives a antibiotic a course for you have to take 5 days it will be very very difficult you have to swallow the course, swallow the pill it takes lot of time morning one dose afternoon one dose evening night dose, dose. and after 5 days you will require so using this uh, nano systems what you can do is you can identify where the particular part has been affected then uh, leave this nano system with this medicine there it just goes up to the point where it has been affected just sprays that uh, uh, powder or what is called as a medical uh, um, medicine and then co comes out of the human body that is what is called as a targeted uh, drug delivery you have to identify where the particular part in the human being is been affected for example it may be a tumor it can be targeting a tumor you have to kill that tumor because tumor cancer these are all uh, one of the top world diseases where lot of people are falling prey to it so co delivery of two or more drugs imaging of the drug delivery sites using imaging modalities all these concepts can be made use of the nanotechnology concepts right now using this uh, all these uh, devices what i have told which makes is the nano technology concepts uh, i'm taking you to the one of the world one of the most uh, exciting concepts in the world that is an application what is this an application of a nano scale device and uh, an integrated nano systems in humans what is this it is an advanced method of sensing and detection of various parameters in the nano scale you might have heard of kevin warwick kevin warwick is the world's first human cyborg that is uh, cybernetics is nothing but the science of closed loop servo systems which interacts with the computers ai machine learning etc and gives out the results on the pc itself right this kevin warwick he was a british engineer and of course a professor at uh, university of reading and now he is in uh, coventry, uh, coventry university as a vice chancellor and he is very very famous for his studies on direct interfaces between computer systems and the human nervous system using ai machine learning ann cnns the recurrent uh, convolution uh, recurrent neural network ann knn cnns and that too using the nano concepts so kevin warwick he did lot of extensive research on this um, uh, man machine interface man to machine interface and he studied this for more than 20 years in fact uh, around 5 6 years back i think in 2015 i think uh, he lost the nobel prize just by a um, uh, fraction of a margin because uh, some of his uh, ideas 
some of his concepts were not uh, uh, they, they were having some lacuna in that particular sense for example if you want to get a nobel prize each and every concept has to be pakka there should be no disadvantages in that in this system what he had designed one or two small disadvantages were there of course it was the greatest invention what he has uh, done that kevin warwick you might have heard of this so kevin warwick is a professor of cybernetics in the united kingdom his research area is sensors artificial intelligence the control the cybernetics robotics the nanotechnology and the biomedical engineering now what he did the why he was called as the world's first uh, human cyborg and that to working with uh, artificial intelligence world's first he was called as the world's first cyborg on artificial intelligence by kevin warwick first cyber in fact a movie also hollywood movie had come on this uh, cyborg right now what he did this mr dr kevin warwick he designed a nano chip or a nano sensing device in the previous what i have told you nano sensing device all the previous slides what i showed you the development of the nano systems and he designed that nano chip or the nano device and he took that he inserted into the left arm of his uh, body you can see there the left arm with a bandage right and in the top uh, slide at uh, top picture you can see that uh, nano scale device or the nano sensor is being inserted into a left arm the doctors are doing some surgical and they are inserting this nano sensor device nsd into his left arm and that nano sensor device directly connected to the brain is uh, is brain and you can see there and uh, whenever he is moving his hand uh, all the signals what he is thinking are being stored in the computer stored in the nano device and that nano device the uh, results what is the uh, the signals what they are stored in that nano chip uh, which is there in his left hand it can be directly seen on the on the, on the computer see what is this uh, greatest invention why he was mr nobel prize because he was the first scientist in the world who worked on electronic communication between uh, humans and the personal computers one simple example i will give you that is uh, so two people are standing for example a teacher is standing on the stage and the student is uh, sitting on the class right what the student is uh, thinking about the teacher teacher will not be knowing and what the teacher is thinking the student will not be knowing in your household activities also you can take for example husband and a wife what the husband is thinking about the wife and he will be not knowing similarly wife what he will be thinking husband will not be knowing so this a uh, two or uh, that that con that thing is our brain the memory is such a very very secretive this one you cannot identify what is there in another's brain what another person is thinking about me we will not be knowing so th this person mr kevin warwick did that experimentation on this electronic communication between two humans so what he did was he took that nano chip okay he was standing the other person he was standing in the opposite right he took that nano chip and it was inserted into his left arm after surgery right and whatever that person was thinking the other person is thinking in his brain all those signals reflexes movements his body movements then his body temperature everything is being stored in that nano chip which is stored, which is inserted into the and and all that signals are transmitted wirelessly onto the pc so whatever the other person is thinking are i should know i should i should bunk the class i should take i should scold this fellow i should add something something like that so whatever he is thinking that will be coming onto the on uh, that can be seen on the computer why he lost a nobel prize because as time progressed due to the lot of uh, as time progressed this uh, uh, chip what has been inserted into the body in that particular area some pus formation was there that you know that any antibody or any material or plate which is inserted into the body fibrous material or steel material it will be subjected to the corrosion rust that was one of the drawback which he has lost the nobel prize so that is world's first human cyborg kevin investigated a series of pioneering experiments involving the neurosurgical implementation of a nano scale device with the insertion into the median nerves of his left arm in order to link his nervous system directly to a computer to assess the latest technology for use with a disabled 
so disabled people will not be knowing they cannot speak correct na and they cannot think also properly so uh, these we mainly work on the disabled people because the disabled people they think and all those thinking thing will be stored in the chip and that data will be transmitted on the computer which can be connected to a mobile or etc and he can think so we, and he can come to a conclusion hey, that disabled person is having some problem he cannot we have to take some rectification action so the development of the implant technology was carried out by a team of researchers headed by mark gasson who along with kevin used it to perform ground breaking research and he was the first scientist in the world right, and he was very much successful to work with extra extra sensory ultrasonic input for a human with purely electronic communication experiment between the nervous system of two humans so what the other person is thinking about me we can identify by incorporating a chip into his uh, hand so and uh, and was considered because that was the most optimal place it seems optimization was done and a particular place was identified where the chip has to be uh, chip has to be kept so whatever the wife is thinking uh, if the husband wants to know then he can insert a chip onto his onto her hand and <laughs> so these are important of course this is not a science fiction in fact this is in uh, infant stage in fact a lot of research is going on if you go to So Kevin Warwick's uh, website, you can find lot of people. Uh, he's taking lot of students as interns from different countries. Uh, you can work with him and uh, work wonders in this uh, electronic communication between the nervous systems of the two humans, right? And I mean, uh, see this nanoscale device is a result of a number of uh, um, devices. One of the devices. See, there are. I here I'm giving you about the history of the taxonomy of the devices which can be used in uh, our nano. Dots, right? What are those? One is a quantum dots. One is a resonant, uh, resonant tunneling. The single electron transistor (SETs). You might have heard of in um, uh, VLSI the FinFETs, the JFET, etc. The FinFETs, the single transistor um, yeah, sets, and uh, resonant tunneling (RTDs), resonant tunneling, tunneling transistors. There are solid state. nano electronic devices the molecular electronics the quantum of course all these uh, words we see it comes from the basics of physics so the nanotechnology is basically physics oriented physics and chemistry of nanoparticles physics of nanoparticle and the biology of the nanoparticle all these three is what is called as a nano science since you are incorporating technology it becomes a nano technology uh, to design a particular uh, de particular device right now you might have seen there are thousands and millions of sensors all over the world in our human body also in a robot also if you take uh, uh, tactile sensors pressure sensors then load cells then ultrasonic sensors infrared sensors etc of course they are all very very huge in size big in size you have to go take up to the nano level or at the pico level or up to the femto level so what are these sensors you should know that sensors are nothing but the feedback devices or the data perceptors which are used to sense the changes in the environment our uh, detect the obstacle sense the obstacle and the object get adaptable to the environment avoid the obstacle by circumventing the obstacle and moving towards the destination for example see if i take a uh, um, we human being if we want to move from one room to another room what we do the moment the brain gives a signal to our leg motors and the hand motors to start moving so that to reach the destination and when we start moving from one particular place to another particular place we see the walls the doors etc avoid and then go to the destination similarly when you are driving a automobile or a vehicle so many vehicles will be coming in front of you against you and so many vehicles will be going along uh, along with you so there are two types of obstacle one is obstacle moving against you obstacle moving along with you so then what you do when you are driving a vehicle or a car you identify the obstacle your brain senses the obstacle using the eyes which are acting as the powerful sensors and this eyes gives a signal to the brain which is acting as a computer or the processor which in turn gives a signal to the hand motors to turn circumvent the obstacle move uh, circumvent the obstacle move around the obstacle or overtake that particular vehicle and go to the destination so that's why sensors makes a system 
system closed loop or what is called the feedback control system for each and every concept even if you take a device up to the nano level or the pico level or the femto level control system engineering finds a place a very very important uh, aspect in controlling a particular uh, device so if you want to control a particular device then you have to make use of sensors so what are these sensors they are nothing but feedback devices feedback control system positive feedback negative feedback etc etc right and now you come up to the now you have seen all the ordinary sensors thermistors the temperature sensors then the tachometers feeds or the ultrasonic sensors which are normally using in robots and all right or infrared sensor which you are using in your tv remote right they are all big in size i want a smaller sensor like a fleck of a dirt i cannot see i should not see with an uh, with a human eye at all only using atomic force microscope i should see so those are called as a micro sensors or the nano sensors they are extremely small devices capable of detecting and responding to physical stimuli with dimensions up to the order of 1 billionth of a meter even then think about this the system itself is a nano the sensor inside it will be again 1 billionth of that uh, this one that much smaller is there what well, only one drawback with that uh, type of this one is the voltage levels what you are getting is very 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 low micro level the nano level and you have to uh, amplify it you need a very good amplifier to at least to bring up bring it up to the ttl logic level so physical stimuli the biological chemical substances the displacement sensors the motion sensors the force sensors the mass sensor the thermal sensors electromagnetic sensors etc so the the sensors uh, as a technology developed uh, the sensor size also started moving from the macro sensor to the micro sensor to the nano sensors and sensors level here i am showing you some of the types of nano sensors one is a nano probe and a nano and, uh, carbon nano tubes the nano cantilevers the nano wires uh magnetic nanoparticles optical nanoparticles oxide based nano system nano sensors bio sensors the nano bio sensors the gold particles nowadays in uh, um uh, vlsi design so are inserting some of the your hr uh, incorporating some of the uh, uh, gold particles or the silver particles plasmonic plasma therapy recently in the corona this one the nano circuits can be used for generation of electricity the nano bio chip sensors here in that diagram we can see that there is a very very small uh, sensor which is 50 nanometer diameter and uh, that nanometer that, that nano sensor probe is carrying a laser beam which you can see blue color and that penetrates a living cell to detect the presence of a product indicating that the cell has been exposed to vibration sorry cancer causing that substance so once uh, that nano sensor detects that particular cell which has been affected uh, then that cell can be brought out or that cell can be killed then and there itself by hitting of a laser beam and that cell can be brought out or it can be dissolved in the blood stream like how you take a, a medi medicine a pill and a capsule or a crocin or a tablet thing it goes into the blood and uh, gets uh, dissolved inside the blood stream similarly this also can be generated uh, this uh, this process also can be evolved so all these types of nano sensors uh, what i have mentioned in the previous cases and in this particular slide can be used for various applications in sensing in detection of what leads to the study of what is called as a bio nano technology and its nano application uh, and its nano applications see nano sensors plays a very important role without nano sensors you cannot make a system work efficiently because no feedback otherwise it becomes an open open loop system just like a human being artificial human being without eyes remember if the human being doesn't have the eyes which is the most powerful uh, powerful sensor are nothing but the cameras in the artificial systems it will become a open loop system the blind people and the uh, not blind blind people right and the modern day sensors the future sensors that are 10 to the power of minus 12 the femto level sensors they can not only sense they can think they can talk they can act accordingly and uh, get adaptable to the environment for example if i take uh, the modern day sensors you take a thermistor what is thermistor input uh, if it uh, for the thermometer input is nothing but the temperature what is the output output is nothing but the rise of the mercury level in the capillary tube 
right now if i take a ultrasonic sensor a transmitter and a receiver transmitter what does it do it transmits a particular signal at a particular frequency say at 40 kilohertz then it uh, the signal gets reflected back that is reached by the receiver once you get the uh, signal it re uh, is re reached by the, at the receiver level then you can come to know that a particular product particular obstacle has been uh, detected okay you can take a tachometer so it is used for measurement of the speed only one parameter so what are these sensors they're nothing but um, what you call as uh, uh, transducers energy conversion device conversion of energy from one uh, uh, form to the another form in fact uh, this uh, particular topic hot topic sensors and actuators is kept as one of the topic uh, one of the subject in uh, or phd coursework of the vtu sensors and actuators it's a very good uh, topic and this sensors and actuators are the basis for this uh, IoT, Internet of Things. And IoT is full of sensors and actuators only. So the modern day sensors cannot think just one input, one output. If you give an input, you are going to get an output, but they cannot think. So the modern day, the future sensors can not only sense, they can also think, act, they can talk, they can act. These are all used for detecting all the parameters of the system, which is uh, the fifth generation of uh, nano sensors, they call it as. And also they call it as the smart sensors. Now this is the era of smart technology. You take a smart computer, smart system, smart intelligence, smart cities, with the government of India has been um, uh, pressurizing on each and every this month. Everything is smartness smartness means incorporating intelligence and not only incorporating intelligence uh, flexibility the reliability and the uh, size becoming reducing smarter smaller and the smaller uh, smaller level the future nano sensors these are the future nano uh, the, the nano sensors which can be of course this is still at an infant stage and lot of and you can also come to a, you can i think you might be people might be knowing about this uh, all in all these uh, resistors, inductors, capacitors, they are the discrete component, right? Um, uh, now, they don't have, see, resistor means it uh, is having only resistor. Capacitance, only capacity. Inductor, only inductance. See, the thing is, um, uh, diodes. Diodes is making it an array of uh, memory chips, right? There, a new type of device has been invented. You might have heard of that, called as a memristor. M-E-R-M-I-R-S-T-O-R. -E what is that? That memristor is nothing thing but a device which not only has resistance it is also having memory it can store it can the modern day fuel cells and the nano chips and the nano memory uh, memory chips the roms rams and all they are making use of this memory stress. a lot of uh, research is going on in this memory stress. see in that if you take a memory rom uh, rom array it is having only an array of diodes if the diode is on, that means uh, uh, information is being stored. If the diode is off, no information is stored. But the thing is, if this memory stores, uh, if we are using in the ROM chip, it is not only a, it can store, it, it can not only uh, give the resistance value, but it can also save the uh, information. That is that. Similarly, like this, it can think, act, sense, and can do a lot of activities in making the system a closed loop. And now, and these nano sensors, when application the biomedical engineering and enabling a personalized machine, see, there is a small chip, this small, like, see, earlier days, uh, BP checking and all device you might have seen is a very huge. Now, the BP checker has come very, very small, minute. Why? Development of the technology, development of the nano systems or the nanotechnology. You take a small blood sample, okay, and that blood sample, you keep it on that sensor array which is up to the uh, micron level. Once you keep that uh, blood sample onto the micron level, all the uh, uh, human body, the uh, particles, what are there in the blood will be detected. The proteins, then the viruses, any viruses are there, any pathogens are there, what is the WBCs, what is the RBCs, what is the DNA, and what are the complete set of SNPs. All these are being uh, detected, just a drop of blood cell are being kept on the sensor array, and that is being displayed using digital means on that uh, particular device. And that is also transmitted to by using GSM uh, to the patient's mobile or to the computer or to the medical records department for storing purposes. So this is how nanotechnology is being used, is being used in the current medical applications without uh, being going to the, do the doctor. That's what I was telling. The lab on a chip or what is called a system on chip in some of the universities, autonomous universities,
industry they have kept this as a particular subject the system on a chip which is the advanced version of embedded systems and the vlsi technologies this nanotechnology may lead to the next generation of what is called as a lab on a chip or a lab on a device so nowadays what is happening is using this lab on a chip uh, system on chip all the experiments also can be uh, designed virtual labs similar to the virtual labs any type of experiment can there is no need of going to the laboratory at all in the school uh, in the college the students can directly make use of this lab on a chip and conduct virtual experiment i mean you might have heard of this multi sim the lab view etc multi sim is one beautiful software uh, where you can design any type of uh, circuitry and you can also see the out outputs uh, right and coming this type of these so many nano devices what we have device what we have used now i am bringing this up to the robotic level that is up to the medical i told you in one of the slide i am concentrating only on the biomedical engineering because a lot of, of my students are working in this particular uh, field right some of my phd students m tech students ug students are working in this field so i want to be a uh, some spe uh, domain specific so that's why bringing this technology up to the medical nanotechnology or the nano medicine or what is called the bio nanotechnology or the bio robotics or the molecular nano robotics what is this the medical devices and their components are being scaled down to molecular levels and successfully applied in diagnostics and clinical therapies the result is the development of the nano medicine and it is nothing but the application of nanotechnology in medicines to cure various types of diseases cancer dart this etc do nanoscopic surgery repair repair the damaged tissues such as the bone muscles nerve put a stunt and come back and identify the cancerous cells and kill them and bring them out of the body and monitoring of the diabetes glucose sugar level and the detection and diagnosis of dangerous viruses in the cells or to bring them out of the body like this many fold that is what is called as a medical nanotechnology or a bio robot these are the different different names which are given by different different researchers across the universe. was who are doing research in the field of uh, medical nanotechnology right now coming to this from that um, uh, i'm bringing you to the world of microbots what is this microbot see day by day as i told you is the technology started developing the component size also started shrinking becoming smaller and smaller that's why one article had come in times of india and showing that uh, small and beautiful robots have shrunk in size but uh, grown in utility the current research in the new field of microbiotics is very very promising numerous researchers centers across the world are vigorously pursuing this micro robotics robots are like a flea of dirt from micro robots called as flea size robots with silicon gears and motors are no bigger than a grain of dirt where this was manufactured at bell labs mit uc berkeley stanford and some of the research centers in uh, japan now what they are doing this you cannot even see this microbot in your naked eye it is just like a tip of a pin even smaller than that of a medi this one antibiotic medical drug drug right that small think about that if that 1 mm it is such small think about the motors and all what are there inside that so the motors are, are having that rotor teeth that measure some thousandth of an inch with the teeth about the size of rbcs the power produced by these motors is translated to trainee transmissions into moving wheels crawling legs or wheeling propellers right and there is at the front end a small lens is being kept and that lens is used to capture the front end of the blood vessel and send the images back to the doctors for the diagnosis uh, purposes in fact the movement in this used by two means one is by the natural movement of the flow of the fluid for example if you take a um, if the water is flowing you you can move along with the water so in that will aid on the other end if you are moving in the opposite direction then you are moving against the fluid so fluid dynamics hydraulics comes into the picture if you want to move against the water flow or the blood flow then what you have to do you have to make use of the actuators the motors comes into the picture now what is the application the application of this is a likely area of application of these microbots could be in medicine cell size microbots can be injected into the blood stream to clean out cholesterol deposits 
or to destroy viruses. Microsurgery may benefit this tiny can make and it's used to repair um, um, microscopic uh, blood vessels. And they are using it as new microsurgical uh, tools, right? Researchers are shrinking robotic components further and further to microbe size and beyond. Microbe size and beyond means nano and then the pecan, etc. In fact, this technology has already been invented and it's already in the process stage in many of the advantage, advanced countries, especially in the US, UK, Europe, Japan and Korea, etc. What they do is, first the CT scanning of the human being is taken. Suppose a particular uh, cholesterol deposit there is an art. What you do, you go for the cardiac checkup, ECG, etc. Everything. Then uh, uh, once that ECG is over, they will identify where the blockage is there. Right, then the heart has to be opened and the stent has to be put and all those things. Instead of this, uh, you can uh, use these microbots or the nanobots uh, to clean all the cholesterol deposits or to put a stent. First, you take the CT scanning of the machine, CT scan of the human machine, human being. Once you take the CT scan or the MRI scan, the entire human being neural network will be there on the computer. You can see on the screen. The entire human neural net network, how it is in the zigzag, zigzag fashion. What you do is at the optimized point, you just cut a vein and uh, insert that microbot or the nanomot into the vein. Okay, and the moment it is inserted, it can be tracked on the computer. On the computer itself, using the mouse or by using specialized uh, touch pads, you can make the robot to move in which vein, which capillary you want and go up to the heart, clean all the uh, cholesterol deposits and come out. So there is no there is no bypass surgery at all. One of the most advanced uh, uh, nowadays uh, in um, uh, cardiac surgery it is being used called the pinhole surgery. Now they are not cutting the ribs and all. The ribs cutting, then uh, that uh, putting of that uh, plates and the ribs etc. Just they make a hole in the small rib and just uh, wire is uh, inserted. Uh, like that. So new technology is being uh, de developed. That is with the help of this nanotechnology uh, and the micro robot technology. Right now, this is since we are making use of robots, which are nothing but artificial human beings, and they are incorporating the human behavior, the biological behavior. This is called as a bio robotics. Right. Researchers are shrinking the electrical electronic components into micron and nano size and beyond. The result is the development of the micro technology and the nanotechnology. Now, what is the idea being? Why we have to do this? Why we have to do research on this nano and on this micro? That is to make the life of the human beings more and more simple and health consciousness. So the idea behind this is a development of what is called the artificial human, but smaller in size. Yesterday I uh, explained the artificial humans which are big in size huge in size but we don't want big we want smaller and smaller human smaller in size which leads to a different uh, entity called the biobot or the synthetic bot or the flexibot in biology in biotechnology this is being called the synthetic biology a lot of research is being done by Sidya Vidyasagar Dr. Vidyasagar was the um, first uh, uh, chairman of the Center for Artificial Intelligence in uh, Robotics. Uh, in uh, that uh, care is there in uh, Bangalore, very next to Raj Bhavan, next to that building, that CIR DRDO concern. That is the Center for Artificial Intelligence. He has worked a lot of, uh, done a lot of research on uh, synthetic biology, right? And that is termed as called as a bio robotics. What is that bio robotics? That is a term which covers the field of cybernetics, bionics, genetic engineering, biotechnology, enzymes, molecules, DNA, ribosomes, AI, nano, the neural networks, and many fields into a collective state. Yesterday, the neural networks, CNN, CNN, we used at a macro stage. Now we are using at a micro stage at a nano stage. That is the only difference, right? I might have heard of ribosomes. Very, very important uh, parameter in our uh, part in our uh, uh, particle in our human body. I think you know that uh, one of our Indian scientists, Dr. Venkita Raman of IASC, he has got the Nobel Prize for his unique work on the ribosomes. Right? This bio robotics is used to uh, refer to a subfield of robotics. Uh, then studying that means. What is that? It is evaluate, it evaluates us to study how to make the robots are behave like biological orga organisms like humans in or like expert systems, systems which work like humans on a nano scale. So it is termed as a genetic is a discipline of comprehensive genetic engineering in which the organisms are 
created and designed by artificial means. Okay, so this field is just in the infancy infancy stage and sometimes known as synthetic biology or molecular nanotechnology. So the result is the creation of life from non-living matter. For example, that is what is called as bio, bio robotics. Artificial, you might have heard that uh, artificial cell is being uh, developed in the world. Artificial kidney is designed. Artificial art or the biosynthetic art, which is made up of fully smart, intelligent materials, fibrous materials. It can, a lot of Germans are the pioneers in this biosynthetic art. They are designing this. You remember, if the biosynthetic art is being designed, think about the life of the human beings, right? So electronics is shrinking in size, mechanical is shrinking in size. So the result is microelectronic mechanical system. Not interested. Still, we want to go further. Nano electronic mechanical system. Still not interested. We want to go further. PEMS, the Pico electronic mechanical systems. So the NEMS and VEMS and the VLSI design and embedded systems are the other fields which are responsible for the rapid development of the artificial biological systems, but not at a macro scale, but at a micro and at a nano scale. This is one of the slides which I showed that the artificial heart is being made using nano components uh, and artificial kidney which is being uh, inserted onto uh, which is being implanted to a, a patient and is being working successfully. Artificial art, lot of research is going on. All the valves, the aortic valves, and the pumps, the veins, the capillaries are being designed using nanomaterials, which are micro. You cannot see with your naked eye. So, like the like that. So, scientists are developing an artificial art, biosynthetic art, and artificial kidney that can replicate the work of real organs of human beings using different types of nanomaterials. Right. So, this is one unique invention using the nanotechnology concept points of view. So, this coming to this finally to this mens. What is this MEMS? It is nothing but nano electronic mechanical system. These are used to describe devices integrating electrical and mechanical functionality at a nano scale. Right. I think you might have used uh, studied uh, designing of circuits in the cadence of way or using the metrographic synopsis tool at the nano scale. Forms, this NEMS forms the logical next miniaturization steps from MEMS and further it will lead to PEMS. So NEMS uh, typically integrate transistors like nano electronics and mechanical actuators, pumps, motors, wires, and thereby form physical or biological uh, chemicals, chemical components working at a nanoscale. So the name derives from the typical device dimensions at a nanometer rate, leading to low mass. NP mass, a lot of research is going on in IASD in NP mass division. The best example being AM, AFM, the artificial kidney, biosynthetic heart, and the artificial skin also is coming into the picture. So the term molecular nanotechnology is a technology of highly versatile and inexpensive molecular fabrication, molecular manipulation, and molecular level man manufacturing. Right? See, in the uh, cadence tool, you design a particular circuit. But uh, you have to implement it. Once you want to real time implementation, then you have to go for various types of uh, real time like FPG or any other this one. Fab Lab is needed. See, what is the guarantee that you have designed the circuit uh, at the uh, software level is correct or not? Only after it is being implemented. So that's why this is what is called as the molecular fab, molecular manipulation uh, related to the fabrication uh, level. Okay, and this refers to the nanometer size range, the scale of atoms, how many number of molecules, and it could uh, use be used to create macroscopic structures of precisely different composite. For example, a 25 paise coil, it can be made up of one billions of uh, nanoparticles. Similarly. That is, a macro can be composed of a millions of nanoparticles or a picoparticles. The main advantage, where we use the microsurgery, nanosurgery, remote surgery, minimally invasive surgery, and unmanned surgery in far off places like the war zones. And the advantage is the micro or the robotic surgery, nanosurgery is precision, miniaturization, smaller insertion, decreased blood loss, less pain, less quicking, or quicker healing time. Just cut the vein, insert the nanobot into the vein, goes up to the heart or goes up to the particular part, does the surgery and comes out. There is no need to do the, uh, um, the cutting of the body, skin, etc., etc. All those things. That is the main advantage of this. Okay, All these components, what I've discussed so far, these concepts have led us to the development of what is called as medical robotics. So medical robotics is fully related to the microbots, nanobots, and the picobots, right? And these medical robotics is used 
and eventually deals with the use of intelligent machine technologies in clinical and surgical medi uh, surgical medicines right patient monitoring stabilizers minimize invasive surgery remote surgery patient rehabilitation medical training and the nanobots can be used now as you see in the corona this one lot of doctors also are facing so much problems to go up to the hospital and uh, the, do the check up everything for the corona affected patients instead of that we can make use of this nanobots or the uh, machines to do this particular job so that the life of the human beings is uh, protected life is very very important so that's why the technology is being developed in order to make the human beings life more and more adaptable right micro and nano robots what are the different components one is the structure is needed design uh, design structure and component functionality and the actuation suppose it has to move you need a motor that motor also size also should be very very less and application what are the application it is a targeted therapy or it can be an environmental uh, remediation targeted therapy to kill a particular cell okay the localized or the micro nanobots the applications can be in uh, fluorescent imaging magnetic resonance imaging ultrasonic imaging computerized tomography position a single emission uh, a single photon emission commuted, computed uh, tomography so these are the various aspects of the medical uh, and the medical uh, robots which are micro and the nanobots right and the top 5 microbots in the world are they so just for two minutes uh, i'll take a break and i will show you this particular video and you can just uh, see what are the top 5 microbots in the world Yeah. I was explaining about the various uh, 
some of the video i'll come back then nano robotics so what is this nano robotics it is a technology that is uh, nano robotics is the technology of creating machines or robots close to the microscopic scale or at the nanometer level 10 to the power of minus, uh, minus 9 nano robots could typically be devices ranging in 0.1 to 10 micro the main element used is carbon as i already told you not silicon in germanium will be carbon in the form of diamond nano composites because of the strength of the chemical its chemical bonding the properties are ex excellent compared to the germanium and the silicon right controlled manipulation of objects is there with the nanometer scale dimension then it's concerned with the construction programming of robots with overall dimensions at the nanoscopic level nano robotic research can be preceded uh, can be conducted at the uh, two levels one is devoted to simulation and nano scale dimension second level manipulation with macroscopy uh, uh, instrument correct so that is any research first it should be simulated on a computer using software so using various types of simulation tools okay once you design a nano system using various types of simulations on a nano scale what is the guarantee that it will work in real time you have to release you have to release the product you have to make it as a product and bring it outside using a pay with a patent right the second is the simulated uh, system has to be implemented in real time manufactured using um, uh, fa uh, fa fabrication laboratory so the first is the simulation software the second is the hardware so first is devoted to simulation with nanoscopic uh, dimension the second involves manipulation with macroscopic uh, instrument so this is a emerging technology field creating machines or robots whose components are at the scale of a nanometer level refers to nanotechnology this nano robotics is refers to the nanotechnology engineering discipline of designing and building nano robots with devices up to the range of 0.1 to 10 micrometer and constructed of nano scale molecular components example there are various types of uh, nanobots called as bacteria bots the nanobots, nanoid, nanite, nano machine, nanomite, etc. The bio nanobots, the bacteria size nanobots, nano manipulators in robotics, then the magnetically uh, guided uh, nanobots. Recently, this uh, nanotechnology, nano robots, has been used in the Boeing air jet to go inside the propeller and identify some uh, part and uh, come out right so that is one of the main advantages of this uh, nano nano robotics uh, concept see as a technology improves this nano will become pico because still uh, the technology is at the nano level only so uh, once it um, the more and more the number of uh, silica as a transistors gets etched onto a single chip the technology improves the memory sizing increases uh, thereby it reduces it uh, comes to the pico level and from there it becomes the uh, what you call singularity level beyond which you cannot cut down a particle to any size right one small nano one video i am showing that is a nano robots to cure the leukemia uh, nano robots to cure the leukemia di disease there you can see the nano robot is going inside a blood stream or a capillary uh, to identify the viruses or the pathogens and to detect the dangerous cells to destroy and uh, bring them out inside a vein or a capillary why this is possible because in front end of the nanobot a small miniaturization miniaturized camera is being kept in the front end and at the back end so that that nanobot takes the pictures of the front end of the vein or the capillary which is being uh, in which it is being removed and all the particles what you can see they are the cells or the wbc's rbc's other type of uh, platelets etc
Now, the micro the nano machines in the recent years. In the beginning of the 21st century, microbots and nanobots were designed, developed in MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, NASA, and Bell Labs. They are extensively used for biomedical applications or biological applications. Bug size robots, smaller in a flea of dirt, can be injected into the bloodstream to clean off all the cholesterol deposit, kill the cancer cells, or to destroy the viruses, remove the blockages, come back, and get dissolved. The moment you hit it with a laser beam, it gets dissolved by itself, like a medical drug when it is swallowed inside. And the computer can trace the path along with the flexible robot is moving inside a vein or a capillary because the CT scan is there, the Wi-Fi mechanism is there, the cameras are there, and the entire neural network is being uh, seen on the computer uh, screen so that using like how the satellites can be tracked, the missiles can be tracked using the radars. This movement of the microbot or the nanobot can be tracked on the computer using wireless means. Such nanobots are to be expected not more than 100 nanometer in size. They can be instructed wirelessly to enter the heart once the scan network of the human being is obtained. Once the nanobots enter the heart, they can take a different form which will allow them to undertake the task specified. Like that, they can become flexibots or the biobots. See, we human beings have got flexibility. We can bend, dance, etc. But if you take a mechanical robot, that is very rigid. We are, we are making use of the links and all by making use of aluminium wheels, etc. They're rigid. You cannot bend. Flexible. You have to become gymnastic. Like you take a rubber band. Rubber band is fully flexible. So because the what you call the veins and capillaries, blood vessels will be zigzag in shape. But the robot will be the dimension will be fixed. It should change its shape. That's what is being shown in the Terminator movie, Arnold Terminator to Judgment Day. How that robot just changes its dimension shape according to the environment. So this that's why they are called as a flexible bots or biobots. You can to make a system using uh, flare, flare, rubber band type uh, this one and they can take the pictures inside the art and send them wirelessly to the medical team or inject some drug to the affected patients or the infected parts and these images what the microbots or the nanobots are being sent to the doctors can be used for investigation purposes by the doctors for uh, tomography purposes angiography purposes and they can also act as uh, drug delivery pellets all throughout they are in constant touch with the medical team by the team. The team not only monitors, but also instruct them in case for they need to do something other than the preset action. Other than the preset action means it has to do some operation, put a stunt in a vein or a capillary or to kill a particular cell or to spray some powder, etc. And also it can be instructed to exit safely from where it has been entered. And like, uh, see, you take an injection, right? If the moment you take an injection, in that injection point only a nanobot can be inserted. Okay, and it can be ejected out by just uh, uh, by some of the other any means. Or when once it is hit by a laser beam, it can get dissolved in the bloodstream directly. So these nanobots can be powered by two means: actuators, as I already told you, no sensors and actuators. Nanobots can either be powered by some means or made to navigate through the body by the natural flow of fluids inside the body. Right? As the fluid is flowing, if the nanobot is also moving in the same direction, then the movement will be aided. On the other end, if the nanobot, if the fluid is moving in one direction and the nanobot is coming in the opposite direction, then more work has to be put. It has to go against the uh, like uh, again against against the flow of the fluid. So more more work has to be done, like moving in a lift coming down and moving up. So without performing the operations, the patient can be relieved of his or of his or her problems. So this is one small video which I'm showing the medical nanobots.
this is one of the uh, cutting which had come in the Times of India newspaper. You can see that rise of the micro machines or the nanobots. And that if you see one, two, three, four, some etc. The point number one, entry number one, nanobots are being inserted. Okay, they go up to the heart, goes all checks each and everything. Once the nanobot enters the heart, they can take a different form, which they allow them to undertake the task specified. In this case, what they are doing is they take the pictures inside the heart, send them to the medical team. All through the team they all through the journey it will be in constant touch with the medical team the team not only monitors but instructs them in the case they have to do any one particular uh, object a particular work right once it is done the robot will come out of the uh, other particular exit that is the item number uh, the val number uh, three this is the pictorial representation pictorial view of a nanobot inside a vein which is controlled wirelessly with the pc you can see all those are the rbcs wbcs platelets the different types of cells different types of viruses the bloodstream etc all these things uh, this microbot or the nanobot is uh, taking the snaps and bringing it into the bring and sending it to the medical team Okay, and one of the main um, application of this nanobot, it can repair the DNA strand. If I, any DNA strand is being affected or being broken or spinal cords uh, broken, etc., the ribs, uh, the, any of the particular L1, L2, L3 level, this nanobots can be sent inside the human body and some surgical operations can be conducted and the operation can be made a success and come out. Or just by hitting of a laser beam, that uh, robot can get dissolved inside the bloodstream itself right and these are the various uh, photographs which i have shown uh, for killing of the cancerous cells we identify a cancerous cell pick it up and come out of the body right and nanobot delivering medicine to the affected area you can just see this is a very good uh, this one and is delivering medicines to the What are the components made in the design of this one? One is a payload because it has to carry the medicine. Okay, the various components in the nanobot include the power supply, that is nothing but the actuators, and the fuel tank, battery, sensors, motors, and uh, manipulators, onboard computers, microchips, the nanochips, the pumps, the pressure tanks, and the structural support. All these at a nano scale, very, very nano scale. So a payload will be there, and a micro camera will be there. That payload, what does it do? It takes a small dose of the drug on the medicine. It takes up to the point, sprays, releases the drug where the injury is being uh, taken place and come out. And this is a micro camera. The uh, nano robot may include a miniature camera also. The operator can steer the nanobot. Uh, micro cam that camera acts as the feedback mechanism, also capturing the pictures. Navigating through the body manually, either along the bloodstream or against the bloodstream, right? The electrodes, carbon wires, the nano wires, they call it as what, uh, sending of the signals from the actuators to the particular motors. The electrodes mounted on the nano robot could be from the battery using the electrolytes in the blood. These, etc., lasers, and uh, of course, these lasers could burn the harmful material like a plague, the blood clots, uh, cancer cells. There's a laser device, like how in your PowerPoint presentation, in all in your colleges and all, you put a, a laser pointer, and similarly, the nanobot or the microbot can have a laser pointer. Once that laser pointer is targeted to a cell, it can be killed. Ultrasonic signal generators are there. Swimming tail. This is very, very important because to aid the motion, the nano robot will require a means of propulsion to get the body as a travel against the flow of the body, blood in the body. This is very much needed when the system is moving against the flow of the body, like you are going in a rowing a boat against the flow of the river, right? The, all these components are used in the nanobot design. Okay, now one small uh, you know, application I'm showing that is inspection of cracks or dislocation in the spinal cord. And there is a tiny robot has been designed by NASA that is just 2 mm uh, in wide and it is injected into the spinal cord around the spinal cord and that takes the cameras, takes the video images 
the transmitter and the receiver sends the signals the tails are used for motion see normally if there is a why the slip disk occurs if there is a break at any one of the levels you take a mri scan once you take a mri scan you can come to know where the slip disk has taken place but that is taken from a distant end from a camera at a particular distance say 1 meter or 2 meter from the mri device but if you send this fellow this nanobot or this microbot inject into the spinal cord just a injection type that's all once you inject it it can go very nearer to the spinal cord take where the crack has occurred and it can send the uh, see taking a picture uh, exactly in front uh, you will get a very good on the other end taking a picture away one meter away from the part you will get a blurred image so this is one of the advantage uh, what the doctors have been using the nanotechnology concept to get very high resolution images so doctors can have a knowledge about the spine system detection of the slip disk cancerous cells so the images which is obtained can be used for investigation purposes and can be used for delivering drugs to specific areas in the spine is it they call this as a tiny uh, scanning micro and there is a camera also and the mini loading bay for storing storing drugs you can take biopsies tissue samples there is a transmitter there is a receiver everything is nano nano sensors nano transmitters and the propulsion is done by making use of two thin wires for the swimming and the, all the sensors what are used are made up of nano carbon nanotubes right and these are different uh, technologies in the uh, which are used in nano for uh, for uh, medical applications the quantum dots then the cancer therapy then the nano pores then the nano shells etc 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 and this nanotech technology in the nano medicine how nano medicine how nano technology is used in delivering nano medicine inside a human body i'm just showing that and the nanoparticles are being injected into the blood stream and the cancerous cells are being identified and burned and biomedical nanobots See, normally i am concentrating on the cancer therapy you know that um, recently uh, for the past 2 3 years nanobots are used to kill the cancerous cells so with this type of nanotechnology miniature still we are using the older medicine to help the sick people so the way we treat cancer is to kill the cancer before the chemo kills you the advantage of using nano e nanotechnology is to fight the new generation of diseases that is sense identify kill the cancerous cells and come out okay the main advantage disadvantage is chemotherapy if you see how many people have fallen um, uh, died because of this cancer our uh, anand kumar and uh, in this uh, film actor kashinath uh, so many people have died because of uh, this uh, cancer and uh, arun jaitley so this cancer can be treated using uh, nano technology lot of research is going on this kiran majbudar shah cancer hospital lot lot of research students can go the I, many of the students biotechnology students are going there and doing internships in uh, kiran majbudar shah cancer hospital center so what is the use that ident that nanobot can be used to identify the cancerous cell and uh, kill it see chemotherapy what does it do it not only kills the cancerous cells it also kills the healthy cells for example it kills the, uh, uh, the uh, what do you call the drugs what we are taking for cancer if it kills around 100 uh, cancerous cells it would have killed 10 uh, healthy cells so it is a uh, drawback so using this nanotechnology you can identify only the cancerous cells and kill them leaving them leaving the healthy cells per intact 
So that type of device I've shown here one. That is the infrared sensor that will depict the red blood uh, the ball as a virus and move it outside the body. Right. And uh, if you don't want that particular killed cell to be inside the bloodstream, it can be taken and a particular space is provided bay and there it can be kept and it can be brought out. So that is one advantage of this nanobot. And that's what I've shown here. Cancer turmeric cells killed by nanobots with uh, laser hitting of a laser beam. And after the cell is being dead, take that particular cell and uh, keep it back in the tray or recycle bin inside that um, nanobot. And then finally, after collecting all the dead cells come out of the, of course, it's a very expensive process of this type of uh, nanotechnology, uh, cancer detection. And nanorobots can be used in, nanorobots can be used in what is called as blood Nano robots can be used in bloodstream to detect the pathogens, identify, detect, kill, and destroy, and come out. That is one of the main advantage of this. Nano robots in cancer detection and curing. A cancer-fighting nanobot that once enters the body could navigate its way specifically to a tumor to deliver a chemotherapic drug locally, all the while evading the body immune defenses. In principle, receptor molecules in the surface of the particles can make them accumulate inside targeted tissues such as tumors, where they can spill out payload of drugs that might be harmful to the tissues. Keeping the particles extremely small ought to keep them out of the sight of macrophages and other immune cells that see the unwanted. In fact, uh, this uh, uh, development of the nanobots is being taken care uh, in uh, Kiran Majmudar Shah Cancer Hospital. A lot of research is going on uh, to avoid the chemotherapy and uh, start this new type of uh, uh, new, new type of therapy. So nanobots used in cancer therapy. You can see there a red blood cell, different types of cells are there, drugs are there. You can identify which is a good cell and a bad cell. Okay, so these robots can identify the bad cell and kill them and bring it out back by making use of radiation techniques, etc. All those things end up right. So this is one such photograph I have shown you. And the main advantage is rapid elimination of the disease, cost of surgery is low, and no uh, um, uh, operational failures, less risk, faster and more precise diagnosis. It might be, it might also produce copies of themselves to replace worn out, speed up the medical uh, treatment. And uh, the nanobots cleaning an artery, which is full of deposited fats. If people eat more amount of oil, the ghee, etc., what happens? The oil, liquid, uh, the oil gets stuck to the walls of the veins or the capillaries, and the cholesterol will increase. As a result of which, nanobots can be inserted into the bloodstream, into the um, uh, arteries to clean the uh, fatty contents and uh, make them clean, right? And medical. Nano robot, some of the applications breaking up of the blood clots, cancer therapy, parasite removal, targeted drug delivery, breaking up of the kidney stones, and treatment of RT cocytosis, the neuron replacement. Now, one of the important things, important application being in the brain. So, this uh, um, the intelligent nanobots can be inserted into the brain to make them more intelligent. To bring it, and that is to increase the intelligence. That concept also is going on. So, in drug delivery, surgery, diagnosis and testing, gene therapy, cancer detection, diabetes, parasite removal, breaking of the kidney stones, breaking up of the blood clots. Identify that particular cancerous cells. There are techniques of identifying a bad cell by a nanobot. Only target that one. We are not targeting the healthy cells, which is done in chemotherapy. And there in chemotherapy, what happens? The air loss is there, vomiting, nausea, tiredness. After some time, you can see the hairs on the head will not be there. So that can be avoided by making this a new type of therapy called as a nanotechnology. Okay. Then nanorobots can be also be used in the dentistry to clean the inner walls of the teeth. Etc. Dental robots cleaning the teeth. Of course, this has been it's just like a dirt, just like a small piece of food particle. The size of the robot it is there, right? And nano robots might carry small ultrasonic signals generators to deliver frequencies directly to the kidney stones to kill them. So kidney stones is very very dangerous as a result of which what happens at nephrology. So many things will come into the picture, and urine content will be urine will not be passed as a result of which you have to uh, go for different types of therapy. Uh, this can be identified where the kidney stone is uh, there, and this nanobots can be inserted into the kidney 
stone just you take inside the body swallow it that's all it goes up to the kidney and there it uh, kills that particular kidney stones and it and goes in the urine and in fact the nanobot also comes out uh, comes out of the urine so that is one main advantage of this nanotechnology okay removing the plaque cells in the blood stream using nanobots this is a very good application of uh, how to remove the plaque cells in the blood stream using the uh, using the nanobots one of them is used for and to remove the cholesterol content in which the arteries become clogged up by fatty substances such as the cholesterols see there it is showing there all veins are blocked because of the fatty contents this nanobots can be inserted to clean the cholesterols and come up as a result of which blood sugar becomes normal and it goes to the walls cleans everything there you can see it is cleaning all the uh, fatty layers it cpu has got parts assembled with more precision 1 billionth of a precision that's why the physicians are operating the nanobot in real time that to inside the blood stream with up to 5 micrometer level and the physicians can control all the nano robot main functions by just a uh, remote monitor on the cpu sorry on the um, um, monitor of the uh, computer now the nanobot is ready to go deep into the blood stream it goes there you can see that the cholesterol content how the artery has been blocked it rectifies everything and comes out ah there you can see all the fatty contents has been uh, this is similar to ngo putting a wire inside the mouth inside the nose and the putting stent and all once the fatty contents has been uh, removed and the artery is free of this fatty contents and the blood flow will be smooth and the cholesterol deposits will be less and the BP, blood pressure will become normal so with the help of this modern monitoring systems physicians can control nano robot movements and the plaque destruction that too in the real time like that too on the computer itself it can be possible due to magnetic markers in each medical nano machine which will be unique for every device so the plaques are removed and without surgery without surgery person will be relieved of the disease and one of the impo one uh, funded project that this is the last phase of the modeling what i'm done and the funded project what uh, what we have implemented in the software level it is around 2.5 lakhs from a company from a nano company and i was the principal investigator and one of my phd student and two mtech students and four ug students of course it was a one year hard work and uh, this we have done and it was also published in the ieee conference in mysore three or two years three years back and uh, also came out in a springer book series chapter in the 2019 so this we have designed a nanobot my entire team of uh, seven has designed a nanobot okay so what are those basic constructional features so that nanobot has got a carbon nanotube body a biomolecular nano robot that propels it 
peptide limbs to orient itself it is composed of biological elements such as the dna the proteins genomes and it can also be easily removed from the body it has got sensors molecular rotors fins propellers and we are designing it for 6 degrees of freedom yesterday i told you what is the degree of freedom it has got sensory capabilities also to detect the target regions obstacles because when the robot is moving in the blood stream lot of obstacles will be coming the main component what we have used is the principal principal component is the carbon which is the bulk of a medical nano robot the first our students have done the mathematical modeling so nowadays for all the research scholars uh, students they directly take the model from some of the base paper they do some simulation and produce the result so we have developed the mathematical model this mathematical model is running up to 30 pages and finally we are arrived at the x direction y direction z direction mathematical model and the motion dynamics of a nano robot in the fluid is assumed to be as a cubic polynomial we are not taking up to nth order polynomial we are taking up to the cubic polynomial because till the cubic polynomial we can find out the roots right and the propulsion model we have developed and this is the final mathematical model what we have developed and all the remaining x y z p k so there are all the constants of the diffusion constants of the um, um, system what has been uh, taken right and our students have studied the quantum mechanics see one thing you remember the motion dynamics of a system is different in air on the earth surface rather than in fluid if a car is moving in the earth crust that is on the road its dynamics will be different than on the moon or then if it is moving in the water or then it is moving on a train so that motion dynamics we have mathematically modeled this one so we have studied quantum mechanics then fluid dynamics how the system will move in the water or in the blood stream that is the hydraulic and thermal motions comes into the picture because the robot is moving inside the body or the capillary the temperature will be there friction reynolds number will be there the fluid flow vlsi concept we have to take into the picture because it is a nanoparticle and how the system behaves the behavior theory comes into the picture in the physics the brownian motions comes into the picture the theory of elasticity we have to take into consideration which is a mechanical and the civil engineering concept because the robot has to bend like a rubber band because it has to move along the veins or the capillaries and the control strategy is needed because it has to hit the target at a particular level okay now if you design a robot it has to be exactly in between in between that particular walls of the capillary here we have shown the simulation motion along the x direction and these are the simulation parameters what we have assumed so what is the blood uh, blood vessel dimension the density then the diffusion coefficient what is the vein diameter capillary diameter flow rate through the vessel blood pressure diffusion coefficients and the 3d environment using blood stream particles nano protein protein signal these are all the simulation parameters data which are incorporated getting into the uh, this one and we have used this simulation tool called as a nano hive one this is a modular nano hive simulator software used for modeling the physical world at a nanometer scale like cadence we are using it and the synopsis tool we are using it for modeling uh, uh, circuits at a nano scale we are using the nano hive simulation tool so the purpose of this simulator is to act as a tool for the study design simulation and experimentation of biological and nano biological entities this is also like cadence it is a very good tool for uh, doing analysis and simulation at a pico level or the nano level okay and we have got the result exact at the predicted buckling mode shape the first harmonic second harmonic third harmonic up to the 10th harmonic we have considered even then the predicted and the exact simulated we have got both one and the same which is shown from the results okay and just like how you take the command window of the matlab or command window of the cadence uh, this is the command window of the what we call the nano hive software there will be menus everywhere there that mode this mode expert mode report option that uh, uh, it's the front end of the front um, end of the this is there i can see a map also is there the vein or the capillary right and that is the component layout it provides easy access to all the components that can be included in a nano device such as molecular devices how many number of volumes how many number of atoms how many number of uh, dna neurons ribosomes should be there on the menu it will be there find uh, save uh, target edit uh, like that there so many icons will be there using that you can design how many number of uh, you can design a 
particular nanobot for example you can see there so many chemical bondings i have shown there i won't say i am going to construct a nanobot with uh, 20000 atoms and 20000 molecules etc so pull down from the drop down menu design like how you are uh, rigging up a circuit in multi sim lab view matlab uh, simulink and in the cadence this is similar to that one only the thing is this uh, nano i is a simulation tool for designing a particular device at the nano level okay you want you design once you design at the nano level then it has to be simulated and that simulated mind give the run once you give the command run, it will show the simulated motion of the design and developed nanobot using the beta version we have taken. And uh, you can see that there I'm showing only the X direction. Okay. And this is the magnetic uh, medical nano robot navigation, which is moving along the X direction. You can see the dots and all. They are the cells, uh, dead cells like that. That also we are incorporated into the simulation. And in each turn, we can give using the mouse, uh, move left, move right, up, down, collect, uh, transfer, kill. These are all the icons which are there on the screen. Okay. Transfer, kill means uh, hit a uh, cancerous cell or a dead cell like that. Uh, turn left, right, up, down, move, rotate. All these using these uh, commands, we can make the robot to move nanobot from one particular point of the bloodstream to the other particular point of the bloodstream. And this is the uh, result what we have shown. And this result of a simulation is designed to test various distributed computing mechanisms because that robot, what we have designed, is built up with 20,000 atoms and it runs for 5.5 picoseconds of the simulation, uh, simulation time. The point is whether the knife will cut the nanotype. See, uh, we have created a knife-like thing uh, that should cut a cell. That should cut a cell. That is the concept what we have, uh, what we have designed. This successfully implemented project and it was given back to the company. Finally, I would like to conclude with the conclusive remarks and the application, but the application is at the micro level and at the nano level. Yesterday, it was at the micro level. So the main application, some 10, 12 applications I'm telling to remove the tumors in the cysts in the brain. The researchers can use the nanobots to inject them into the body through the spinal cord where it is used. It's inbuilt camera to take the images of the patients or the dislocations can have a clear cut picture of what is happening in the spinal cord, act as drug delivery pellets or microsurgical tools can take biopsies can act as nano submarines cancer detection detection of cancerous cells and to destroy them and nanobots can be very useful for therapy of patients since the current treatments like radiation therapy and chemotherapy often end up with destroying more healthy cells than the cancerous ones used to maintain tissue oxygenation in the absence of respiration, repair in condition, recondition of the human vascular tree and nano surgery in the control and treatment of di diabetes, increase control the level of increase uh, glucose in the blood to break the kidney stones. Medical nano robots can uh, locate damaged blood cells like the DNA strand. It can repair and come out and to repair of damaged tissues, unblocking of the artery, etc. You might have known this Ray Carson. He's the father of neural networks. His textbooks is highly popular and it is the prescribed textbook for ANNs. Ray Carson. What he tells? He tells it is the quote from his textbook. Intelligent nanobots can be made to enter our brains through the capillary and interact directly with our biological neurons, thus making us smarter, remembering things better, and automatically go into the fully emergent virtual reality environment through the nervous system predicts the father of neural network see for example if he is something you have forgotten you want to tell something you that it is not coming out of your mouth what you do you take your uh, <laughs> hand fingers and start scratching your head that means some stimulation will go to the brain and you will remember and you will uh, tell so what you can do is to increase the intelligent quotient these uh, nanobots can be inserted into the brain to stimulate them and to increase the intelligent quotients and make them remember more and more and become smart. So nanotechnology can be used to kill cancerous cells. MIT have done it. That concept is tense, locate, kill and out. So this therapy has got many advantages over standard chemo and radiation therapy. Advantages, you know, fast healing, hair loss will not be there, etc. So one of the doctors uh, 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 surgical be done in uh, using robots. I sense, detect, locate, identify, kill, and dispose. Then medical nano robot holding a sperm cell. So nanorobic scopic robot technology can also be used to infertility to treat disorders. It can identify a healthy sperm cell, a sperm cell or a male reproductive cell and guide towards the egg. So 
scientists have proved that the sperm is a super robot super nano robot because it has got each and everything na all the scientist researchers are taking that as the prerequisites that is the reference for designing of the medical nano robot so rapid drug delivery pellets that is rapid delivery uh, delivery of drug carriers propelled and navigated by catalytic nano shuttles take that drug go up to the point kill and come out finally to conclude a brief review of the ai and robotics was given yesterday nano nanotechnology evolution had given and its application micro nano and uh, macro micro and the nano robotics he the era of this is the era of nano so the everything is shrinking the atomic and molecular level all devices day by day it is becoming smaller and smaller right the war has begin to create energy and technology at the smallest yet imagined a war that can be thought of a tip of a needle the era being termed as a nanotech era you know that the bangalore is the hub of nanotechnology iisc lot of research is going on in uh, np mass division the nanotech division central government has funded 500 crores under the leadership of our, our bharat ratna cnr rao who is a big man in uh, nanotechnology you can say the father of indian nanotechnology every year nano science events are taking place in ashoka hotel and it come it is in uh, i think it is in uh, nelamangala that entire uh, new campus where that uh, nanotech park is being uh, established majority of the scientists in the world say that sperm is the ideal model for design of biobots or the nano robots because the sperm is the perfect biological delivery system as it generates its own energy no actuators no motors and it can transfer to rough terrain it know how to hit the target and to deliver the goods therefore the sperm is called as the most intelligent and sophisticated nano robot surgical robots often uh, offer a good possibility to save the precious soldier's life in war zone see while sperm delivers the dna researchers are now borrowing ideas from the sperm by making use of behavioral theory very big the branch in artificial intelligence and to provide energy how the nano scale robots aim to deliver medication from the medical device see the ongoing developments of molecular stay scale electronics then uh, sensors motors and signal processing instrumentation are expected to enable micro and nanoscopic robots with dimensions capable comparable to that of bacteria by 2020 ad Uh, for a majority of the biomedical application in fact the us many of the countries around the world are pumping money uh, to detect the corona virus by making this nanotechnological concept which i would like to tell tomorrow right the simulated model and also i had shown you and also a practical approach using advanced graphic simulation i was done again and see only one nano robot we had used we can use multiple nano robots that is called as the um, uh, multi agent learning which is a machine learning concept comes into the picture multiple like group study if only you are studying only one five five six students can you sit together and study that is called as multiple nano robots can work in coordinations like human like in a project software company my main advantage is to kill the viruses and the cancerous cells but the main problem is difficult in fabrication and control technologies you cannot can you take up to the 10 to the power of minus 9 level very very difficult you cannot do experiments in the laboratory only in the simulation you can do it you need a sophisticated vlsi simulation fab lab and also communication signals communicating the signals from the nano scale to the macroscopic scale is very very difficult the main difficulty is in the fabrication laboratories uh, inadequate uh, availability of the fabrication labs in the country only the thing is 3 to 5 nanons is about the maximum size for blood borne medical nano robots due to the capillary uh, due to the capillary passage requirement for example <clears throat> that is the limitation makes it difficult you see i have given the two lines borders okay you cannot design a nanobot exactly that dimension you have to take that uh, hatched part what i have shown it should be otherwise what happen exact dimension if you are done it will hit the walls of the veins of the capillary and it will get ruptured so it has to go exactly along the gvd that is what is called as a task plan which i need to tell tomorrow right so the limitation makes difficult so advanced nano robots will be able to sense and adapt to environmental stimuli to intelligent etc to replicate themselves so since nanotechnology is being used every day to develop new product this has led us to biological warfare that biological warfare is nothing but the identity the, the corona and the danger imposed by the size of such materials are very very real see a small virus 
biologic this that is what uh, china has done this they have inflicted they generated this biological tool and trying to destroy the world and coming to the last phase ai machine learning now the iot comes into the picture all these club will called as a nano ionet they call it as very big branch which is coming up cloud computing the security smart machines big data cloud computing sitting in one particular place you can control the nanobot in your body that is ai io and iot and there is a lot of uh, work going on in center of excellence in nano center in bangalore in the ministry of science nano materials this is a major research area what you can take up in the further future and we can go for modeling and simulation process technology mems is there nems is there in fact this is a interdisciplinary effort involving several departments in science engineering faculty spanning areas from material science research to system integration the recent invention being the single electron uh, transistors we can collaborate with iit bombay that is the center, that is the place where uh, uh, fab lab is there you can stanford uc berkeley this foreign universities industrial uh, texas instrument bharat electronic semiconductor sitar that is uh, in um, mumbai that's an iit you can collaborate with this and you can take up this as your uh, field and you can start developing some new and new technologies three levels of training you can also attain lot of uh, trainings uh, so that you can get familiarization and some training you can get it and collaborative projects you can do it and sense in iisc they can do lot of internships for the students and also for the faculties also and for the research education relevant technology you can reach out to the world for sustainable development our main aim is to in the biomedical engineering especially with the invent uh, to detect this uh, cancer simulate to dis detect the cancer the new virus which has come out the corona so the further research is more functions can be included in this nano robot consider how the electrical impulses in our body will affect the electrical components of the robot make technology accessible to the public at a limited cost that's how the The vaccine has been found out for the corona vaccine, similar to this. These are the research what you can take up in this nano field, and uh, the roadmap what I'm putting towards the nano robotics. You can go for biosensors. The field is very huge. You have to take up a specific part, specific topic, and do the research. This biosensors and the components assembled nanobots, distributed intelligence, like uh, in uh, you might have heard of regenerative computing, uh, reconfigurable computing in uh, MTech, uh, or uh, distributed computing, embedded systems, automatic fabrication, information processing. So all these are the different topics. Uh, what I have um, put for the roadmap for the nanoscopic uh, research. and truly it's a multidisciplinary field physics chemistry mathematics algorithm and programming medicine molecular biology material design biochemistry neurosurgery and neuroscience classical dynamics the mechanics kinetics kinematics experimental tools then micro and nano fabrication medical imaging the nano manipulation imaging fabrication virtual reality the haptic interface lot of students are doing project the computation tools bioinformatics all these comes into the picture and you can take this particular field as a road map towards the development of some new concepts in the so, so a birds a clear cut small idea i'm giving you about a birds eye view of r&d in nanotechnological robotics that is started in this 2020 under the leadership of our day of our bharat ratna sir 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 cnr rao he has done a lot of research in fact he has done many of the in fact patents he is having huge amount of patents in this nano medicine nano is a chemistry man so you can see this uh, uh, health issue social ict in electronics community supporting energy environment water purification so many bird view i can i have given you composite materials life sciences material sciences optical sciences mathematical modeling etc this materials this is a bird view of what you can take up as a further research in the nano field so how to proceed further small make a small group in respective departments your faculty with the students attend workshops webinars conferences like this you gain knowledge enter into a tie up or mou with indian institute of science the center for nano science and engineering as a network not going but stand because because you know that you approach someone with the background work done the main problem subject is the nano electronics and nano technology has to be introduced in syllabus in many of the autonomous institutions this subject itself is being introduced nano electronics nano technology of course it is basically is physics related and because the bio robotics or the bio nano technology is the future it is the country 
country's future, not only the country's future, it is the world's future in the eradicating the deadly viruses. Thank you one and all for a patient hearing. Now I would like to leave the session uh, the stage for our uh, organizers. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much, sir, for the excellent presentation, sir. And, um, I think I have taken uh, two and a half hours. So tomorrow I'll try to keep the session. And tomorrow I'll be uh, complete, completing the AI, machine learning, data sciences, uh, different concept with respect to the macro, micro, nano, and uh, further related to the some question answers at the end. OK, sir. Uh, today we learned about the nano robots and uh, particularly how we need to design the nano robots. Yes. the different tools we need to use and what are the applications different types of applications in the healthcare industry as well as in the hospitals uh, the presentation uh, really ca came out very well sir. thank you very much for thank the you sir. thank, thank you thank you of uh, uh, ec and uh, all the organizing team i once again thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you very much and uh, we also thank all the participants for their excellent uh, and active participation and uh, if there are any queries, uh, all the participants are requested to ask the uh, queries uh, at the end of the tomorrow's session. And uh, the re recordings of the session will be also posted on the YouTube link. Uh, participants are requested to make use of the same. So thank you, one and all. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you.